Good afternoon. Um, my name is um, Scott Berry from Apple Core Designs. I have here with me Sean uh, Sean Coomber, my technical director. Um, we're going to go through the next series of uh, Lunch and Learn um, webinars. This is uh, based on uh, Withy Pit Lane development, uh, which consists of uh, three lunchtime sessions. Um, the first one obviously being today, based on existing site and concept. For those of you who haven't um, been involved uh, with these sessions before, um, we have uh, a series of uh, Lunch and Learn webinars on our YouTube channel, and they are very easily uh, accessible um, from the channel. Um, those of you who haven't been before, it's uh, youtube.com um, forward slash ADLAAC. You'll see here we've got a, a range, um, anything from uh, mobile communication, um, renovation of projects, uh, Kobe um, information that further down on uh, BCF workflows and open BIM format. So there's a, a wealth of, of information there for those of you who'd like to look a bit closer into um, sort of model based design and, and validation and, and various outputs as well. The, for those of you uh, unfamiliar with um, Archicad, we have been um, so the, the concept of the virtual building has, has been around for a number of years. Um, it's been developed for over, over 30 years. The, uh, the virtual building concept stores all the information in a central database. Um, that can be anything from existing uh, demolition proposed buildings, so working with existing buildings, or it can be a coordination of um, model-based design across new, new developments, which is what we're trying to, to sort of explain over the next three, three webinars. The idea of the building model is that you then generate information directly from that. So plan section elevations, uh, details, schedules, um, 3D documents, ways of communicating the design through mobile communication, uh, maybe through our iOS and Android devices, um, as well as communication uh, through open BIM workflows with other, other disciplines. What we're looking at today is, the, is very much a, a virgin site where we've actually uh, had the information from um, DXFDWG, um, but as well as that, what we can do is ask uh, information around X and Y co uh, Z coordinates, which allows us to automate the process of importing data in a single click. You'll see from uh, the, the data we've imported from, from the site uh, that what it basically does, it creates a, a mesh element that provides a, a true 3D model. You can then start to generate cutaways, um, road uh, cutaways, and start to get some um, very good analysis, uh, including things like cut and fill calculations. Using the standard tools um, in, in Archicad through conceptual modeling, you can take anything through from um, area calculations right the way through from modeling existing sites through to um, house types and, um, and, and models as we go through. We can then interrogate this information to give area calculations, so scheduling features, um, even at concept stage, and we'll show you that uh, in the presentation as we go through how very early, uh, very early stage um, we can also look at um, even maybe sort of a cost analysis uh, per dwelling or, or over the overall site. So it gives us some really good uh, intelligent feedback at an early design stage. This is the uh, site we've been uh, looking at. Um, it's actually um, somewhere in, in, in Worcestershire. It's, it's not uh, any, by any means um, going through to, to a planning um, application. This is a virtual site purely to explain to you how uh, the process works and the fact we're taking information from, uh, from the data right through to concept uh, and as I say through, through right through to the, um, to the end of the, of the project. So I'm going to pass you over to Sean now who's uh, going to go through some very um, sort of live um, detail on the model and explain to you uh, how we get to the stage we're at within this webinar. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll start off by looking at um, importing the data into Archicad. We've got two pieces of data that we're going to import. One is a DWG with this information on the site, and the second is a text file from the surveyor containing the measured points. We'll also look at um, manipulating the model to create roads over the top of the surface, 
and using the morph tool to model existing buildings and also import different house types into that site. So in Archicad, the first thing that I'm going to do is open up a worksheet and this is a completely blank drawing document where we can import a DWG or other drawing. We're going to import that as an XREF, which is through the external content menu. Browse for that XREF. And we're going to choose our anchor point. So we could import to OS coordinates, or in this case, we're just going to place it to the Archicad origin point. At this point, Archicad will ask which layers that we, we want to import from this file. We're going to import all of them for now. And this is the file that we've uh, imported, the DWG. So we can see the mesh, the site boundaries, and the existing buildings, and the existing roads. And then if we go across to the ground floor plan, we can show the worksheets as a trace and reference. And we just need to make sure that we've got all of our new layers that have been imported from the DWG visible as well. Okay, so on the floor plan, we can now see a reference of that DWG. This isn't um, editable, it's, it is snappable, and that gives us a basis for uh, creating our model. Next, if we go to the interoperability menu, we can import the surveyor's data as a native Archicad mesh. So for this, we need to find the text file as provided by the surveyor. In this text file, each row represents a different measured point. We've got the X, Y, and Z coordinates, and this is just a tab delimited file. This only contains the measured points from the terrain, the survey. It doesn't include things like uh, ridge heights and, and trees. It is just the measured, measured survey. And at this stage, we can open that up and define the surveyor's units, which is most likely to be meters, place it to the original coordinates, or define graphically, and we can snap it to this DWG. It is also possible to offset the top of that mesh by sea level, so then we're working at a ground floor zero point. We'll snap that to the top of the uh, to the top of the DWG, and make sure that we can see the survey over the top. Before I model anything else, I'm just going to turn off the grids in this DWG. So I'm just going to go back to that and we'll just hide that layer. And then we'll apply that also to our uh, floor plan. That will means that we'll avoid snapping to those extra lines. And now to create the road, we'll go to the slab tool, use the magic wand, which is the space bar. And then when we go into 3D, we can see the mesh that's been created from the survey, surveyor points and also the mesh, the road that's created over the top. So obviously this um, mesh isn't completely flat. So we need to make sure that we increase the height of this slab so that it cuts through the top. And then we can use our solid element operations to trim this to the shape of the mesh. So we can do that with the right click connect menu. In this case, what we're going to do is select the road and say that's the target. We want to edit that in some way. We're going to use the mesh as the editing element. And we keep the bits just where they intersect. Uh, and then we can also trim the mesh back to uh, back to the road so that we don't have those overlapping elements. Right, so I'm going to go back to the floor plan and just place a couple of level dimensions on top of this mesh. So I'll turn off the trace reference for a moment. And then if we zoom in on that road, we can place the level dimension tool at any point and it will give us the height for that particular point. So that's taking the top of the slab in this case. And also if we take a section through that mesh, we can go to the section tool. To find where we're going to take that section, open up that drawing. And there we can see the road 
and the existing uh, existing site. With the dimension tool, we can place elevation dimensions with the text for that particular point. And finally, if we put the if we put the reference back on, we can model some of the existing buildings. So to do that, we can use the morph tool. And again, I'll use the spacebar for the magic wand and that will trace the shape of that polygon. So now when we go back into 3D, And then we can start editing this morph so we can stretch that by a particular distance. Also edit it by subdividing surfaces. Control the visibility of any edges. And then we can sub subdivide surfaces to create the pitched roofs. Okay, so that gives us the basis of modeling the existing site. In terms of importing the uh, proposed buildings, we've got some additional files that we've set up. We've created different um, external files containing each house type. So this is just um, a representation of the volumes with the zone tool. And we've got different files that have been set up based on the different house types. Back in the site layout, what we can do is go to the external content again place hot link, select which file we want to link, the stories from that file, which stories we're going to reference them to in the site. and then we can drag it to the required location. Because these are um, zones, they don't display automatically in the 3D window, so we need to enable those. And then we can select our uh, house type and elevate that to the correct point on top of the mesh. Okay, so now if we come across to this file here, we've imported um, numerous house types into this site layout as a, a concept phase. Each different house type is highlighted as a different color within this model. And what we can do now is start to analyze this for data. We've got a couple of schedules that are set up, one that displays the house types. So we can see the, um, each house type within the model and the quantity of those, and then the total of all of the houses on this site. And also a schedule that starts to price this up. So for each house that's been imported, we've got a separate ID number that can be created um, as part of the hot link to the external file. The type of building, the area per story with the total story area for each um, house type, and then a price, price per square meter and the total price for that house type.
So the, the idea of the, um, the modules is that um, we can work from conceptual stage uh, with the, the representation. Um, what we've done is this is to show you in the next part of the, the webinar, we're going to be looking at a lot more detail about the documentation part um, of, of each house type. So the modeling phases, um, also uh, what plan section elevations are generated and styles. This is just um, re replicating the house types into um, an overall uh, site using what is called BIMX, so it gives us a, an, a, a very sort of quick overview of the overall site, looking with all the various house types being inserted. This is um, currently obviously a, working um, towards um, this to show you t towards the end about how, how you transfer information to, um, to BIMX, not only the, the graphical information that you can see here on the site, but also the fact you can actually um, Put, put across the data that Sean showed you. So information about um, the, the, the particular house types, um, the, the actual IDs, um, maybe even down to providing manufacturers information if you need to go that, that uh, bit further.